Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice radical equation that was shared on Twitter by one of my followers. I'm going to go ahead and share the link down below. So we have the cube root of x minus 1 plus the cube root of x minus 2 equals the cube root of 2x minus 3. Now, there's something nice about this problem, just not just an ordinary uh, cube root problem. But notice that the radicands, that's what they're called, isn't that a weird name? But anyways, the expressions inside the radicals, if you look at them carefully, you should realize something. This is something important because when you are preparing for competitions or Olympiads, uh, you should definitely have an eye for these kinds of things. And this is what it is. We have x minus 1 and x minus 2. If you add them, you get 2x minus 3. Of course, it could be a little bit more disguised, like for example, if you add cube root of x minus 1 along with the cube root of 5 minus x, then obviously their sum would be 4, right? Then we could have cube root of 4 on the right hand side, which would definitely make this easier to solve. So that's the whole idea, and that again, this could come in more complicated forms as well, but in this case, it's kind of hopefully easy to see. All right, now. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and solve this problem normally. Like, how do you solve radical equations? By squaring both sides, if that's a square root, right? But these are cube roots, so let's go ahead and cube both sides. Cube here and cube here. Obviously, the right-hand side is going to be nicer. How do you cube A plus B? There's a couple different ways to do it. I usually use the following method, A cubed plus B cubed. And then I add the 3ab times a plus b. This is actually something that I also use uh, for solving cubic equations. Uh, it's basically the basis for the cubic formula. You know, this whole idea is after depressing the cubic, you can go ahead and use this identity and call a plus b equals x, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and apply it to the left-hand side. This is going to be our a, and this is going to be our b. So when you cube a, in other words, if you cube this sum, it's going to equal x minus 1 plus x minus 2 plus 3ab. That will be 3 times the cube root of x minus 1 times x minus 2. You can go ahead and write it as x squared minus 3x plus 2 in this case. And that multiply by a plus b, which is the radical, right? And uh, you can just go ahead and kind of write it like this, right? Okay. All right, great. So now we have x plus x, which is 2x, and then minus 3, plus 3 times the cube root of x squared minus 3x plus 2, multiplied by the cube root of x minus 1, plus the cube root of x minus 2, which was the original expression on the left-hand side. And of course, this is equal to the cube root, this is equal to the cube, cube of that. So let's put that on the left-hand side as 2x minus 3. Make sense? I switched sides. Ho hopefully that wasn't a problem uh, because that was on the right-hand side. Now it's on the left-hand side because I don't have room on the right-hand side. Make sense? The side switched, but that's okay, hopefully. So now, uh, remember what I told you when you look at a problem like this, you hopefully realize that, okay, the sum of these two expressions equals the, the third one inside the radical. That's good because that means uh, a lot of things are going to cancel out, leaving us with 0 on the left-hand side, which is nice because on the right-hand side, we have a product, right? And a product equals 0 is a good thing because then you can set each factor equal to 0. Obviously, 3 cannot be 0, so you can totally ignore that, but everything else can be 0, which is nice. So let's go ahead and start with the cube root of this first. So I'm saying that if this whole product is 0, then the cube root of x squared minus 3x plus 2, remember this came from the product of x minus 1 and x minus 2, this is equal to 0. Great. If the cube root of something is 0, the stuff inside the radical is 0, which means x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Nice. And then, as you know, this is factorable. How do I know that? Because we just multiplied to get this, right? What did we multiply? x minus 1 times x minus 2. So factoring is harder than distributive property because it's reverse engineering in a way. You kind of have to find uh, two or more things that give you 
the expression when multiplied. In this case, uh, we do know it comes from this, so we can easily reverse the process. And now from here we get x equals 1 and x equals 2. Now most of the time with radical equations, you may want to check your solutions, but since these are cube roots, they should work, but it doesn't hurt to check, right? So we're going to go ahead and check everything at the end. Because we still have to look at another factor, which is this one. And that will be the cube root of x minus 1 plus the cube root of x minus 2 equals 0. How do you solve something like this? We have the sum of two cube roots. Is there a formula? You don't need a formula. You can either think about it or just subtract one of them. For example, uh, you can subtract cube root of x minus 2, and that'll be a minus cube root of x minus 2 because you're subtracting from 0. And now you have a couple different ways to go about it. You can either think about putting this minus 1 inside as a negative 1 because the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, or you can cube both sides. I think cubing both sides would probably look a little safer here. And when you cube both sides, this is going to be x minus 1. This is going to be minus of x minus 2, uh, the opposite in other words. So from here we get something nice because this equation has a solution. Now notice that if I got x minus 1 equals x minus 2, which could happen with square roots or fourth roots, you know, even ones, uh, that wouldn't work because there are no solutions. Not at all, right? Infinity, that's not a number. So now put the x's on the same side, 2x equals uh, 2 plus 1, which is 3. From here, x equals 3 halves. Nice, but we still need to check. We don't have to, but let's check for fun, right? What are the other ones? x equals 1 and x equals 2. So we seem to have three solutions, right? Let's go ahead and check each one by substitution. What's our original problem? We, need sh we should check with the original equation, cube root of x minus 1 plus cube root of x minus 2 equals the cube root of 2x minus 3. Again, this is a special type of equation, and I just want to say thank you, math 26039335. That's the handle on Twitter, and I'm going to share. Sorry, did I say Twitter? I should say x. x.com. Such a nice uh, URL, right? So short. Anyways, that was probably a smart move. So, Let's go ahead and check out. First, 1 and 2 because those are kind of easy. If you replace x with 1, you get 1 minus 1 cube root of that plus cube root of 1 minus 2. Now, this gives you 0. This gives you negative 1. And on the right-hand side, if you replace x with 1, you get cube root of negative 1. So they are equal. We're good. If you replace x with 2, same thing is going to happen. You're going to get a solution. So x equals 1 works. x equals 2 works. And then 3 halves. Hmm. It's kind of funny, right? Because 3 halves is actually the average of 1 and 2. So that's kind of like an interesting scenario where you have something like cube root of x minus 1 plus the cube root of x minus... Sorry, I meant to write x minus a number, like a given number like a, x minus b, and then that equals the cube root of x minus half of a plus b, which is their average, by the way. And guess what? That works. And you know why? Here, if you actually take out a 2, you'll get x minus 3 halves as that. So maybe we should have a 2 here. I don't know. But you can go ahead and check it out. It should all work out. And do I have a graph? Let's check it out. I normally do include a graph. And yes, these expressions intersect in interesting ways. These are two cube roots, but one of them is a sum. The other one is a single one. But they're really nice curves, as you can see. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. And next time is probably going to be in an hour or so. So make sure to watch that because I have a titration problem for you. Anyways, see you soon. Bye-bye.